And uh, next up, we have uh, the Data Lab, innovative collaboration between faculty, students, and the library with uh, speakers from Seton Hall University. Looks like we have at least three presenters. And uh, Sama, are you going to take primary? Yes, thank for you. sharing. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for uh, attending this uh, small talk. I'm here with my colleague, um, Sharon Enns, the assistant dean, uh, and also Lisa DeLuca, assistant dean, and Chelsea Barrett, uh, a business librarian, and me, Sima, uh, the data specialist uh, from Seton Hall University Libraries. Uh, we work together as a um, research data services team. Um, and today we're going to present on one of our projects uh, called the, the Data Lab. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the, one of our projects called uh, the Data Lab. Uh, the Data Lab is um, a new initiative by the Research Data Services at Seton Hall University Libraries. The idea, basically, we help faculty with their research projects. So a faculty would come with a promising research idea that could be potential for uh, publication or professional presentations. Our team uh, sits with the faculty, brainstorm some ideas, how can we make that happen? Uh, some of the faculty have their own students, so we take in that uh, those students, we train them based on the research project, whether it's qualitative, quantitative, or even data visualization. We require those students to attend at least four of our uh, data services classes that uh, are mandatory for being in the data lab, in addition to the uh, customized training for that project. Some of those courses um, are general, like the research data uh, management. This is one of uh, our required uh, classes for the student. So once we take the student and we train them, we follow up with consultation, troubleshooting, if they are designing a survey and they, they run into some hiccups uh, along the way, they can reach out to us and we uh, set a, a follow-up consultation, answer all their questions. Uh, then at the end of this uh, data lab, which is a semester, um, the student gets a thousand dollar and also um, learn new software uh, skills or uh, data skills. And if that project gets published, the student's name will be added in that project. So this is a, a summary of this data lab. Let's now talk about how we come up with this idea and how the data lab um, established. Established by a, a, a collaboration between Lisa DeLuca and the School of Diplomacy. They have their own um, Diplo lab and they uh, applied together Lisa DeLuca and Dr. Huddleston for internal grant of uh, 15000 to train the Diplo students on uh, uh, data skills and data uh, analysis uh, software. We received a positive feedback from faculty and students and some support from the provost office to uh, duplicate the Diplo lab into a data lab that, that is open for all departments across the campus, not only diplomacy. So this is how it began the data lab. So uh, we started in spring 2022 with uh, three students in addition to the Diplo Lab. In the summer, we had four students and in the fall right now, we're working, working with uh, four students. So uh, in addition to the uh, other projects, the Diplo Lab, we uh, trained 10 undergraduate students, one graduate student. Uh, the project they were working on was a qualitative project. So we trained them in research data management. Uh, students were able to create their own research data management. 
We train them also to conduct literature review using ISTI because majority of us knows that in uh, research method classes, they teach literature review, but uh, less likely to teach a software that is used to conduct literature review. So we use ISTI since we have a license, we uh, manage and distribute a license for ISTI to our students and our faculty. We also train them in qualitative coding to the workshops that uh, uh, teach a different approach to qualitative data analysis. And then finally, we train them to use Atlas DI both version, the, the web version and also the desktop. Also, we took in uh, a health science project with one uh, graduate student, the same situation. They were working on big qualitative data projects that involve uh, qualitative data from multiple countries. Uh, the student attended multiple trainings in Atlas DI and also uh, many consultations uh, to, uh, as we said, to troubleshoot some of the obstacles for students. And uh, through our projects, we can uh, assess whether the students need more training or they need just follow-up consultations. For the health science, the student did not need a lot of training, but sometimes she would run into a problem. So majority of our consultations either a 10 minutes uh, Teams call or sometimes just emails. And then we had also student from uh, three graduate students from uh, psychology. They were more independent. They did not need a lot of assistance from um, the research data services. Uh, this semester, we uh, created two applications on the website. Uh, student application and faculty application. We were so surprised how many students applied for the uh, data lab. And when we asked them during the interview, how did you know about the data lab? They keep telling us uh, friends of, um, um, their friends told them or some of our previous uh, participants, and they would love to be part of this uh, initiative. We don't, we don't require any uh, prior knowledge of uh, software or research methods because we would like to train them. Um, but we ask for these type of uh, experience and software just for our um, data collections. And also we were surprised with the form that majority of our students who had experience with quantitative software they were interested in doing qualitative uh, data analysis, which is very interesting and also amazing to see how some of our students are looking into qualitative uh, data analysis. Also, we have a faculty applications too, and we ask them if they have recruited a student for their project, uh, because majority of faculty, they would come to us with their own uh, students, and if they don't have students, we can match them uh, with a student from uh, from the from the list that we get from student applications. They tell us a little bit about their project, and after that, we schedule a thirty minutes uh, meeting with the faculty to understand the project, how we can assess what type of software. Do we need how many licenses we need for that software? And also we link them with the students. Some of the faculty prefer to interview students and um, uh, introduce them to the project before they're working on it. Um, we received, as I, I said, so many applications. We were not prepared for uh, this number of students who are interested in this uh, opportunity. Moving forward, we are looking to run more assessment of the data lab, uh, surveying our students, uh, conducting interviews with students. We have casual conversation with our students. They really like the idea. Uh, some of them, they said that they were able to get a job or internship uh, because of the, the data skills that they obtain through research data services, which is really uh, good to hear. And we, hear, we keep hearing positive feedback uh, from faculty because most of the time 
they have this amazing research project, but uh, they don't have enough time either to train students or even to uh, pay students to uh, help or be part of this research project. Uh, we're looking to expand the program, uh, find sustainable fund, um, establish a formalized program for this opportunity so we can uh, ensure the, the fund for our students and also our faculty. And uh, this is the list of our uh, team, uh, Sharon Enns, Lisa DeLuca, me, and Chelsea Barrett. If you have any questions or if you would like to know more information about the data lab, please uh, don't hesitate and contact us. And I can take questions right now. Great, looks like we have a question already in chat. Um... If you'd like to answer the question from Joe. Um, I, I can jump in and answer that. Um, so we, we do a little bit of recruitment. This was the first semester we did um, a bit of outreach um, to market um, the data labs. Um, we, we do have a lot of folks that we already are working with who we know um, needed some funding for their students. So we initially solicited them um, and we're still getting off the ground, but I, next semester we'll probably do a broader call for, for applications. Um, so this could go in a newsletter, it can go out in department meetings. Um, that's probably how it'll work for next semester, but we are still trying to keep it a little bit small right now until we completely have this um, set up and running properly. Okay, thank you for your question. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, uh, any additional questions? We're doing great on time. It looks like a couple in Q&A. Uh, yes, uh, what was the impact of paying the students. And the other question, how did you determine 35 people was a good number? So students, they really liked the idea of being paid and also learning data skills. We had uh, one of our students, uh, we paid her a couple semester, then uh, she offered to work for us. Uh, without even being paid because she said she learned so many things that uh, she wants to take on uh, when she get a job um, and she really liked it and she wanted to stay with us even if we don't if, even if we can't pay her so I think the student really appreciates the data skills but also a thousand dollar is really uh, an uh, amazing opportunities for them and uh, how did we determine the number of uh, people? Actually, those the the first semester, that's the amount that we could take uh, in because as we said, the first uh, soft launch was uh, uh, internal grant for 15,000. Uh, then after that, uh, we received more funds for that. And if I can add to that, um, so Dr. Al Sharif is very hands on with the students. So um, keeping track of the programs and the projects and what do they need and, you know, getting them dedicated time to work on this. It's a little bit, you know, taxing on our time and our workload. So um, again, that's looking at formalizing the program and seeing how we can, you know, look at how to make it a little more efficient, which is why, as um, Sharon and said, we're not really promoting it as much right now because we're trying to get it together. But um, it is definitely um, great. The students love the $1,000, but when they come in, they're like, oh my gosh, data is so cool. And then um, they can take those skills and put that on the resume and they have outputs to show when they apply for jobs. So it's been a really great initiative for sure. 